right, let me show you what I did today, or rather we did today. Here's our steering linkage. Okay, let me climb on in there so we get a nice close look at this. This is the universal that attaches to the forward rack and pinion. It's actually spined so that it can go on a number of different ways. That's very important because we're going to want these only go on one way, or two ways, basically. And we want to keep these in line all the way up to the uh, steering column. That allows you to set these with the wheel straight, but and in the right position. You'll look inside of here, you'll see that the rod ends just the just like an eighth inch or you know three sixteenths of an inch inside of there. I do that so that I don't have any problems with the steering hitting or rubbing up against the other parts of the universal. Same screw right here. Okay? And we we do this so that nothing rubs. Okay? Now right here you can see I bent this over a little bit. No problem. Let me show you what I use to bend it. I love this. This is my crescent wrench. Okay? All two and a half feet of it. That's what I use to bend it over. You can probably bend it over with a pair of vice grips or a much smaller crescent wrench. It's actually that is pretty malleable and it allows me to bring this over. What I was basically, what I was shooting for, I got a quick stop, quick saying basically. What I was shooting for was a straight shot between the column here and this. Having a straight shot means that there's less chance of a wobble in the steering. It's really something we want to do when we're assembling this. We want to make sure that from here to here, it's a straight shot and that everything's in phase. Now, this is the other type of uh, universal that we use. This one actually slips over the, um, the steering column that we, we have in place. Steering column, it slips over it. This one slips into it. This one right here is the, the, the uses the smaller one for the shaft. And down here, we have the small on one side and the forge spine on the end. This, this, take, this makes up our steering linkage. This one's ready to go. Now, I want to show you a couple more tricks that I did to this. As you know, I cut this one out here so that it, it actually clears this and makes a nice look to it. Looks like this was done, you know, done with some type of thought in mind. So that, that being the case, I want to show you this new bracket I made up. Okay, here we are on the inside of the car, which means you're probably I'm probably going to have to lighten this up with my uh, computer. This right here is a two-piece bracket that holds our that holds our uh, steering column to the steering column support. You can see, I welded the nut, I welded the bolt through here, put the nut and the bolt on the top side, just like that. This actually has a rubber cushion in here that I glued in here. We use the, the same type of rubber as we used on the, uh, the, uh, the fenders. And this thing, as hard as a rock. <laughs> that was the steering wheel moving, not the uh, column. Okay. I don't know if you can catch that. There we go. Yeah. It's all pretty good. Now keep in mind that this is a power rack right here and not a manual rack, but it moves quite well. But despite the fact that we don't have the uh, we don't have the rack of pinion or the engine in place, there we go. There's a couple of shots of it moving. That's me turning the wheel back and forth. It's very easy to turn. 
and once it has power, we want to make sure that the metal here comes out to a certain point. We want to have clearance in case of there's no binding. Okay? We want to make sure that the upper column, the upper part of the steering linkage, is practically a straight shot that keeps the wobble out of the string. Or what, what I like to call hard spots. When you're going around, you run into a hard spot, generally it's caused by a wobble in the, the steering linkage. Okay? The less, the straighter the shot, the less chance of wobble. The less chance of wobble, the less chance you got of a hard spot in the thing. We modify the firewall bearing so that it fits cut in nice and tight with the, uh, the master cylinder as it should. And we have our new brackets that's going to allow the under, under dash to be installed even closer than before. When we use the aluminum brackets, we found out that the aluminum brackets were actually hanging up on the under dash, and a lot of people didn't take it, didn't care for that, and they had to grind those alu nice aluminum brackets. This is a very nice steel bracket. It's, it's actually stamped that we made up here in the house, and it's very easy to install. I'll show you another one of it, another one over here. This is uh, one of my other project cars. This is the one with the clutch. This is a better view of it. Loose. I haven't put the rubber on here. You see that I'm still using the tape on the and on the uh, the columns because I'm still jigging this thing up. I have a lot of uh, you know mods and stuff that I want to try out on this one. But it's very solid. It's going to work out just nicely, and hopefully you'll all be happy with this.